everybody, it's Miss Wolf here at Stone Creek Elementary in Rossville, Georgia, and we are celebrating the start of fall. It is the fall season, or autumn, as a lot of people call it, um, when it's starting to get cooler outside, and we're seeing some changes in nature because the seasons are changing. We're going to celebrate that in a drawing today, a drawing of a wagon full of pumpkins. It's a fun drawing and we can add lots of details if we like, like other things you might see outside with a pumpkin and wagons, maybe in a farm. We're gonna be focusing on shapes with this project. Our classes have been learning how they can use different kinds of shapes to draw objects and things that they see um, and make them look more real. So we're gonna be using some shapes that have certain specific names. They're called geometric shapes. So we will use some shapes that um, are certain um, types of shapes, the geometric shapes. We'll use a line to draw the shape because the shape is just a line that goes around and then starts and start, stops and starts at the same place. So I created a shape, it's not a perfect shape, but I was trying to create a geometric shape there called the circle. We just used, I just used a curvy line made it stop at the same place where it started and it made a space inside that most people recognize as a circle, a geometric circle. So then there's another um, curvy line shape we can draw that's a geometric shape called the oval. So circles and ovals we can make with curvy lines. There are also shapes that we can make with straight lines that come to corners, make angles, like this one that has three straight lines, three corners. The triangle shape and then there are some that have four sides square and the rectangle the rectangle is longer one way and shorter the other way and a square has lines that are all the same length so they're all the same size so those are some of the geometric shapes that we know and we're going to be using some of those in our drawing of a pumpkin full of wagon I mean, a wagon full of pumpkins. I said that backwards. That's silly. But then there are some shapes, especially those that we find in nature, that are not geometric. They don't always look the same. Sometimes they can change or grow or move. And they don't have specific names like circle and oval and square and triangle. But they are shapes because a line goes all the way around a space and connects so that there's a space that's enclosed inside the line. This is a natural organic shape. So the shapes that are not geometric are called organic or natural. Things from nature are usually natural organic shapes. This could be a cloud. It could be a puddle of water. It could be the shape of a creature because things from nature are things that grow or are alive like plants and animals, clouds and rain and water. So when we are drawing things that are natural, they look a lot different than things that have geometric shapes um, that people make. Like So in our drawing, we're going to be drawing two different kinds of things. We're going to be drawing a wagon, which is something a person made, and we're going to be drawing some things like pumpkins, maybe an animal, some leaves, and those are things that are made by nature, and they are natural shapes, not geometric shapes. So we're using two different kinds of shapes in this drawing because we're using man-made wagon and natural things that you might see on a farm to put in the wagon for a celebration of fall. We're gonna be drawing a pumpkin, or more than one pumpkin. So I have a pumpkin here for my students in the classroom to see. This is not a real pumpkin, it's a fake pumpkin, but it looks like a real one. And it doesn't have a perfect circle shape. If I turned it that way, it still doesn't have a perfect circle shape because it has a lot of bumps where these different sections of the pumpkin are. Pumpkins are fruits. They're a fruit, kind of like an orange, and they have lots of different parts, different sections. So it's not a perfect circle or oval shape. There are some sections that look like long, skinny ovals, and if we look at those parts when we're drawing it, we'll be able to make it look like a pumpkin. There are other things from nature that are, have natural organic shapes, like this vegetable. This is a squash, and it doesn't have a perfect geometric shape. It does have a natural curvy um, shape to it and things like leaves from the trees that are changing colors in the fall. They're different from each other, they're different sizes, they're different colors, and the shapes are different, so they're natural shapes. So we're gonna be drawing some of those natural shapes when we put um, details 
in our pictures today and when we draw the pumpkins in the wagon and also animals like if you want to draw a cat or a dog or a bird any kind of creature a little rabbit maybe and because it's outside there might be some creatures in your drawing those are also going to be natural shapes we're going to start with some geometric shapes um, so you're going to need a pencil and an eraser to draw the shapes with me. Kind of, here is my pencil. And we'll need an eraser, either on your pencil or one of these art erasers would be good. We'll be using a Sharpie to trace all the lines so we don't lose the lines when we color our picture. We're using colored pencils to color ours in the classroom. And you also might want a circle to trace for the wheels of your wagon so that they will be the same size and a perfect geometric circle, which is a hard shape to draw free form, free hand without tracing something or using a tool. So we're gonna use these little cup lids in our classroom. They're a little bit smaller than like a sour cream lid. Or you could use a little bowl or a little glass or a little cup at home to draw these and make them the same size for your wagon. So we're going to start with our circle shapes for the wheels of the wagon. And they're not right in the middle because we need two wheels. So it's not going to be way over in the corner because we want our wagon to stretch out farther than the wheels. So we're going to put it at the bottom and we're going to move it over from the corner just a little bit and then trace the whole circle on each side to make two wheels. So right now everybody's going to draw your wheels on your wagon. Trace your two circles so they will be the same size. Well, part of that circle went off the bottom and that'll be okay if part of it hangs off the bottom or if it's a little bit higher than mine, that's fine too. But we want to put them pretty close to the bottom so we have a lot of room at the top for the wagon and for everything we're going to put inside of the wagon. <clears throat> I'm going to trace... Um, yeah, I'm going to trace my circles so you can see them better on the video, but we're going to draw the whole picture with a pencil before you trace your lines so that if you have to erase parts of it, you won't accidentally trace it and not be able to erase it. So there's my two circles for the wheels. And we can also divide those circle shapes into triangle shapes with just some straight lines. So put a dot in the middle of your circles make it as big as you want. It's the part that holds the wheel together. Sometimes they're large, sometimes they're small, and it depends on what size wagon this is. This could be a little toy wagon, like a little child might pull around in their yard. Or it might be a big wagon that a farmer would pull um, behind their truck or behind a, a horse. So you can decide if you want it to be a big farm wagon or a little toy wagon. And if it's a, a bigger wagon, it might have a bigger wheel hub to hold those wheels together because they need to be bigger wheels to hold a bigger wagon. And then to make the different triangle shapes, we just need a straight line going up and down through the middle of each circle, through the dot in the middle, and then draw an X that's going right through the dot that you drew in the middle of the circle. Use your pencil, so if you want to correct it, if you need to, you can erase it. If the lines don't line up perfectly, just make the dot a little bit bigger in the middle so that it looks like the dot is covering the area where they all connect with each other, where all the lines cross each other. And you will have some triangle shapes in the wheels too. So that's a geometric shape, a triangle and a circle. We're using lots of geometric shapes in the wheels and in the wagon because it's something that people make. It's not from nature, it's something that a person made. For the body of the wagon, we're gonna use a ruler to help us draw the geometric shape that's in the wagon body. The body of a wagon is kind of a rectangle shape. So it's a long rectangle. It can be skinnier or it can be wider. There's different kinds of wagons, but we all need a rectangle shape to make it look like the body of the wagon that you put stuff in. So we're gonna draw a rectangle above the circles. You can leave a little space between the tires, the wheels, and the wagon to put the part that holds the wheels onto the wagon between them, or you could just make the wheels go right underneath the wagon where you can't see the mechanisms that hold it together. So I'm gonna use my pencil and draw a straight line going across the paper, above the circles, above the wheels, and make the line come out a little farther on the front and the back so the wagon sticks out a little more than the wheels on the sides. And then we need another line for the top of this wagon. I can make it as thick as this ruler by just putting 
the ruler on the first line I drew and then draw another line on top of that one, or I might want to make it a little higher. If you line your, the ruler up with the first line you drew and then just slide it up straight and evenly, then you will have a good straight line for the top part. Try to make the wagon, the rectangle, as straight as the bottom and top of your paper, and it will look like it's straight across and not leaning. And then we just need some straight lines on the sides, standing straight up and down like the sides of the paper that are straight up and down. So we're trying to draw a rectangle that's straight up and down on our paper to look like the wagon is just going straight across. You could draw another straight line at the top of the wagon to make it look like a ledge, a little edge on the, around the side of the wagon that holds things in. So if you want to put that little detail at the top, that would be another way to make it look more real. Now if you have space between your wagon and your wheels, we're going to need to add the parts that hold the wheels onto the wagon. We just need some curvy lines that's, that go over to the sides of the wheels and get a little bit closer together at the bottom of the wagon. Can you see that? Yeah. You can make those a little thicker so they look like they're made out of metal or wood and it's kind of a pole shape, like a cylinder. Now if your wheels are just right under the rectangle for the wagon, you don't have to draw all the parts that hold it on. But we do want the wheels to be connected to the wagon or it doesn't look like a real wagon. We also need to put a handle on our wagon. So it could be a very simple handle with just one little rectangle shape, or it could be a more complex handle that has different parts to the handle where it sticks out and then goes up and then has the part that moves back and forth when you pull the wagon forward or back. So you can decide how complicated or easy you want to make the handle of your wagon. The handle might come right out the top of the, of the wagon body where the pumpkins are going to be sitting, or it might come out from the part that's holding the wheels onto the wa um, wagon. So on this one, I think I'm just going to make it a simple rectangle shape handle coming off the front. You can use your ruler to make your lines really straight. Just two lines for the sides and one for the top. And if you want to put an extra little end, little part that makes it look like the handle that you could hold on to, you could draw that too. So we have a rectangle for the handle, we have a rectangle for the body of the wagon, we have circles for the wheels and triangle shapes in the circles for the different parts of the wheels. The wheels could be made out of wood or they can be made where you can see through them with tire shapes around them. So there's lots of different ways to make the wheels on the wagons or, and the handles on the wagons and you can choose how you want to make yours. Those are all geometric shapes that we just used because a wagon is made by a person. And people usually use geometric shapes when we make things like buildings and tables and boxes. We usually um, create things with a lot of geometric shapes. We're gonna draw some natural shapes now of things that are not made by people, but things, things that come from nature like the pumpkin. So when we draw our pumpkin, I'm gonna draw one on the board here first for you to see how to draw it. We're gonna be using some lines, just like we do when we draw any shape, that aren't necessarily geometric shapes. We're going to use lines to create the shape of the pumpkin. We're going to start with the shape of one section, the part that sticks out the most in the front on a pumpkin, and it's kind of an oval shape, it's long and skinny and a kind of an oval shape. So we'll start with that long skinny oval shape for that first section of the pumpkin, just one part of it. And that's the part that's going to come down the farthest because it's sticking out the most. And then we'll start at the top of that oval, draw a line curving up, around, and then down to the bottom of the oval to make another section on our pumpkin. And then we do that the same way, start at the same point at the top and make it go the other direction and curve it around to the bottom. Starting to look like a 3D form and not a flat shape now because a pumpkin is not a flat thing. And it's very round, very three-dimensional. We're always going to start at the same point at the top, curve a line up, around, farther, back down to make another section, and it's going to be a little bit higher every time. So start at the same point, curve it up, around, down, and a little bit higher on the side. And that might be enough for a pumpkin. If you want a skinny, tall pumpkin, that would be 
enough sections. You might want one a little thicker or wider, and then you just need two more curvy lines coming out of the same point at the top, getting a little higher every time it stops on the side. So you can make your pumpkins as tall or as short or as wide or as skinny as you want because there are different sizes and shapes of pumpkins. They're natural, so they're not all the same. And some of the pumpkins have stems. This one, this pumpkin has a stem that's leaning over. Sometimes the stems stand up more, and sometimes they do have little curvy vines on them. So to make our pumpkins look more real, we can add a stem. We just need an oval for the end of the stem, and then two lines for the sides of our stem coming right out of the middle of our pumpkin. So you can draw a stem on your pumpkin. It can lean over, it can stand up straight. And then you might have some curvy, curly vines coming out to look like the vines on the pumpkin. Because sometimes there's still vines on them because they grow on vines in the farms. You can put some leaves on your pumpkin stems and leaves and vines if you want to. All right, we're going to draw our pumpkins in the wagon in our picture. So this was just practice. Now I'm going to draw one that's in the wagon so that it looks like the bottom of it is inside the wagon and not just um, floating around in the sky above the wagon. So I'm going to start with the oval in the middle like I did on that one and make that oval go down into the rectangle shape. So the bottom of the oval is inside the rectangle shape. Let me erase this pumpkin so we can see the new drawing better. <clears throat> So we're just starting with an oval for the middle section of the pumpkin. I made that one pretty wide, so this is probably going to be a big pumpkin I'm drawing. But you might have a smaller oval for a smaller pumpkin or a shorter or taller one because pumpkins can be different sizes. And then we just need to start at the top of that oval, draw a line curving up, around, and back down to the side for another section. And then do that going the other direction as well. And then I'll need two more at least to make it look like a pumpkin. Curving up around into the bottom. I'm drawing the whole pumpkin, even the part that's going to be in the wagon that we won't be able to see um, when we're finished. So that's, I think that's enough sections to make this look like a big, wide, uh, fat little pumpkin in my wagon. And then I'll put a stem on this pumpkin. You might want to put a stem or some vines and leaves on yours too. We're going to try to draw three or four pumpkins in this wagon. We'll fill it up so it looks like a, a fall picture with lots of pumpkins. Maybe they're going to the store to be sold, to be turned into jack-o'-lanterns or decorations for fall or pumpkin pies. So we'll fill our wagon up so we can take it somewhere to sell these pumpkins or decorate with these pumpkins or eat these pumpkins. I'm going to draw another pumpkin now. I think I'll make this one tall and skinny. So I'm going to draw a tall, skinny oval first. And then draw the curvy lines going up and around for each of the sections. Up and around, up and around. And I have another pumpkin. That one's leaning a little, and you can make your little lean over if you start with an oval that looks like it's leaning over too. And there's my vines, maybe a leaf sticking off on the end. We'll make it look kind of interesting. More details make it look more real too. I'm going to draw at least one more pumpkin, try to draw three or four pumpkins, maybe five if you can fit them in your wagon. And we'll start with that oval shape. This one's going to lean the other way, so I'm going to make the oval lean towards the back of the wagon. And then start at the top of the oval and curve a line up and around, up and around on both sides, then up and around higher. And there's the shape of that pumpkin. Just need some stems and leaves and vines on it. You can squeeze a few more pumpkins between the first ones if you want, or you can leave some spaces between them so you can draw some other details, like maybe a little kitty cat or a mouse, a dog. I drew my cat like it was peeking out over a pumpkin. So if you want to draw an animal between the pumpkins or above the pumpkins or sitting on the ground, you could add that because it's outside at a farm. You might see some animals there. You might also have some hay or straw. In your wagon, I'm going to draw some lines to look like the hay that's under the pumpkins in the wagon. And then because these pumpkins are inside the wagon and not just in front of it, I'm going to erase the parts of the pumpkins that are in the rectangle. The rectangle is where the body of the wagon is. So in my class, we're going to erase the bottom of every pumpkin 
that's inside the rectangle. So we're just erasing the parts that are in the rectangle, even the part that's the edge of the, the um, part of the top of the wagon that might hold things in would be in front of the pumpkin. So I'm erasing that too. So now it looks like my pumpkins are sitting inside the wagon. Since I erased over top of the top of the wagon, I need to draw that back in there. You might have erased a few lines that you need to, and you can just draw those back. You can use your ruler to make them straight or just sketch it in where it was before. So now the pumpkins are in the wagon. They're not just in front of it. They look like they're inside where the bottoms of them are under the side of the wagon. You can draw some details in the background. You could have some grass or sky or a mountain or landscape behind your wagon full of pumpkins. You could add animals, bugs, flowers, maybe a building in the far distance or a fence. It's a farm, so we can add lots of things from nature that you might see in a landscape in our picture as well. I hope you enjoyed making your pumpkin wagon with me today in the celebration of fall. See you next time. Bye.